Welcome, Virgo, to your June 2022 tarot reading. I am Mrs. Jen, and this is Tell a Tarot, where I tell it like it is. Real tarot, real life. No rainbows and unicorns. Okay, let's dig into your energy. Okay, show me. Virgo, please. Show me. Virgo. Show me, Virgo. Virgo's energy, please. Enlightenment. Your energy's opening up, hon. Don't know how. Don't know why. You might be learning something. Miracles. Gorgeous. Your mind's expanding. Or your heart space is expanding. Okay. Stand still and trust. Okay, your energy has been at a standstill because there is something dealing with trusting. This situation, whatever you're going through right now, Virgo, is requiring a sense of trust, a sense of wonder, a need to open up. There might have been something that you've been in lightened about that you may put the brakes on something because of some information that came to light that you're not you may not be trusting okay so we will we'll see what this is about but this overall energy here is talking about a situation you're not trusting some kind of information that comes forth that you may be questioning and you, you're at a standstill right now while you figure shit out here. Underlying is change. Never underestimate the underlying energy. There's a change happening here. There's a change. Okay, let's see what this is. Okay, show me Virgo's energy. Um... You might be dealing, let me know if you're dealing with a Capricorn here. Let me know if you're a Capricorn devil on the split. Mistrust of some sort. Show me Virgo, please. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. And I do apologize if me pounding on the table with the cards as I shuffle is loud. I think it's a little bit loud in Leo's reading, but I kind of changed my mount for my overhead. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully it minimizes that. Okay, show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. Okay. Ace of Swords energy. That's your truth. Okay, we've got the Two of Swords. Oh, my Virgo. You may have been blinded to some sense of truth. You might have been blinded to the truth about something and you become enlightened. Now I understand. This represents your reality, current circumstances. Underneath the face, what led up to this is four swords. Okay, so, you know, there might have been an energy, there might have been a situation. Your energy is suggesting that there is a, something that you thought you put the rest was done and over with. That is resurfacing, something's resurfacing here. 
K was passing 801, something swift, some swift action, some swift change here. Eights are change. Eights are action. Eights are, you know, um, our individuality as well. There, it, there's some fast moving change. There's that communication that I was talking about. The information that comes forth that speaks truth to you, but you seem to be blinded to it or not wanting to see it. Come on, Virgo. What's above you, what you're thinking about, is the lover's card. Is the lover's a soul tie. Near future is the sun. So, energetically speaking, this does not look terrible. Very rarely do I see a perfect reading. Perfect energies are what I like to call the unicorns and the rainbows and all sunshine. Sunshine's here. There's some kind of communications that you've become enlightened about, I'm telling you. But this is the standstill. And indecision. What do I do with this? A little bit of confusion. I don't understand this. What is this truth? I thought this was done. I thought this was over. And in your mind, you're saying, yes, I understand. There is a soul tie here. There's a soul bond. Lover's card you, typically means a complicated soul bond. What other readers will call twin flame. I'm not 100% convinced of twin flame energy. Because my version of twin flames is different than other people's okay what most readers consider twin flames i do not feel exists okay um because most twin flames they feel that the soul splits the soul never splits okay that's my biggest issue about twin flame but i do believe in mirroring i do believe in mirroring each other's energies being on the same frequency um i like to consider them soul bonds same with the soulmate. You know, this is other realizations. That, you know, a lot of people talk about soulmates. We have multiple soulmates in our lifetime. You know, so I buy more into the soulmate energy or theory. But I like to call, lump them into our soul family, our soul tribe. Okay, our soul ties, right? So, we do have a deep connection here. We do have a soul tie here. There is something, there is some emotionality here. And I feel like that these are emotions that you thought were dead, buried, gone. This communication comes in, comes up to the surface. Somebody speaks their truth. And you're like, uh, I don't understand. Why? I don't understand. But the sun in the future can be happiness and joy, but it also could be enlightenment. Seeing the light. Okay, let's continue. Okay, your, coming, your energy, your strength is showing up as the Ace of Wands. Your desire for new. Okay. Your desire for new, that is your passion here. Passionate about something. And, and as a strength, I see this as very passionate about what you invest in. It's like when you invest, you don't invest half-assed, okay? Your passion's in it. And your passion is definitely connected to your emotionality as well. Um, surrounding you, we have the nine of coins, nine of pentacles. So somebody in your energy, let me move these down. Somebody surrounding you may be single. Maybe they found themselves single. Maybe that's the truth, the reality that somebody is coming forth and saying, Hey, Virgo, I'm single. Uh, a connection that there may be some history with that you put the rest, that you buried. And it's coming back around and they're saying, Hey, I'm single now. This is also Virgo energy. It could be another Virgo in your surroundings. 
For some of you, this could be just talking about you in general. You've rested. You've taken a time out. Change is happening. You be, you're becoming enlightened about something. That, But you're still trying to keep a lid on it. Because you have some major trust issues. But there is this sense of abundance and independence in the environment. Could be your person. It's, it could be both of you. It could be you just being very independent, very single. Hopes and fears is the for, is the wheel. Wheel of fortune. Change. You 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 want it, but you fear it as well. Makes sense. Now, out of all the earth signs, you are the mutable. Okay? Mutable means ad adaptation. Good at adapting to new situations, new scenarios. If it, you seem that you're more flexible than Capricorn. Car Capricorn has some of that flexibility. And the totally opposite end of the spectrum is the Taurus, who is very fixed, who fights against change at every opportunity. Now, you're kind of, you, on the other hand, are welcoming this change. You're, well, you're letting the wheel spin. You are progressing in your energy. There might be a little bit of hesitation, though, with that stillness and that two of swords. A little bit of hesitation. We will find out why. Potential outcome. This is why. Ten of swords. Pain. Oh, I get it. I think that whoever is resurfacing or whatever energy is resurfacing, this is not a person. It's a similar circumstance that comes about that reminds you of the past. Hence, you're trying to suspend that energy because of pain. Underlying energy, six of wands. There's a sense, I feel like this, you're very confident on your own, being single, following your own passions, your own ideas. But that gets shot to hell as soon as this energy comes back. Uh huh, Emperor, you could be dealing with an Aries. The Emperor, the Emperor is demanding recognition. The Emperor is may even be sitting in a place of ego. So you might be dealing with somebody who's a little bit egotistical. Six of Pentacles. They may be a bit demanding of you. Maybe that is why you're hesitant here. This is my I feel that this is a person that you have history with that you are hesitant about. You thought you put it to rest. It's resurfacing. And it's conjuring up those old emotions, that old anxiety. Why now? I'm comfortable. I'm on my own. I'm independent. Now there's this change. Why? You know, it's like the wheel is spinning again, forcing things forward. You know, and there's a little bit of discomfort here. Now, the Ten of Swords in the outcome could indicate an ending of the pain. And it's like, whatever the scenario is, whether it's a person or a scenario that brings up these old emotions that you had buried, it might be necessary to take off the blindfold and face this truth head on in order to heal this Ten of Swords. Okay, now we're going to get your advice. I'm going to pull your advice card. And then we are going to start digging. Okay, that's when the real shit comes out. This here is the baseline. In other words, the surface level stuff. The deep shit comes when I do the clarifiers and I start digging. Okay.
what's this in here? I flipped a bunch of cards just flipped over. Let's take a quick look here. Um, two of Pentacles. Temperance. Six, huh. Six of Wands again, having victory, healing something. Did you, uh, healing a cycle. Yeah, there's some kind of emotional abandonment here. Could be, here we got that fire sign, fire again. Could be from a fire sign. Some kind of an abandonment, some kind of loss that is coming back together. That having some kind of victory, there could be, this could have been third party energy. Recognizing that it needs to be healing done. This feels like somebody you've done cycles with, to be honest. Okay. Um, I do feel that there is a painful history here. Okay. That's what soul bonds are. Many times there's, there's usually pain somewhere in the lovers. Okay. Okay. Show me advice for... What is the advice for Virgo, please? What is the advice for Virgo? The tower. Breaking free of your old ideas. Your old way of thinking. Five of Pentacles. Letting the tower fall. This does have markers of endings. Indication of endings here. There's something from your past that you haven't let go of. Okay, something from the past you have yet to let go of that you're still holding on to that brings you pain, brings you even a, maybe even a sense of abandonment. Okay, speaking of abandonment, here we go. You know, sometimes the messages come. You know, sometimes I might be a little bit slower than what I want to be. That's life. Abandoning ship. Abandoning an idea, abandoning a connection. Your advice is to abandon this. Escape from the fiery inferno before you get burned and hurt. Mm, this doesn't look good. The devil energy came up for a reason. On the split, he said, oh, yeah, you could have been dealing with a Capricorn. I said, there's devil energy. Okay. That, that devil in the split is talking about codependency, being caught up in a not-so-healthy cycle here. Interesting. Okay, let's dig in here. Let's put the Two of Swords aside for a minute so that we can look at this Ace of Swords, this truth. What is this truth, please? Show me the truth. Show me the truth. Tell me the truth. It's like the truth is staring you in the face about something and you're, you're in a place right now where you just don't want to see it. What is this truth, please? What is this Ace of Swords? What is this Ace of Swords? Show me this Ace of Swords. 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 Show me the Ace of Swords, please. Show me the Ace of Swords. King of Pentacles and Four Chalices. There you are. This is rejection. That's rejection. There's a painful truth that has come out that somebody... May have cut you off. May have accepted a different option. Okay. Um, though you're trying to be practical. Your generosity not, recepted, not received. Okay, Eight of Pentacles. With the Two of Cups underneath, underlying. 
There's an energy here of you giving to a connection and you really working on it, working on a situation. But with the four of chalices, it is met with disappointment. Maybe somebody not being appreciated. Somebody looking at other cups as well. Nine of wands, two of cups. Yeah, there's a change in this conne in a connection here. I think you're already in a connection. And there is some kind of change that is occurring. Wheel of Fortune. Change to evolve. Even though you know that things need to change. But at the same time, there's a resistance here. Hence, two of swords. Okay. Show me this two of swords energy. Show me this two of swords energy. Two of swords. Show me the two of swords. What is it that Virgo is not seeing here? Queen of swords. Queen of chalices. There's two people here. <clears throat> There's a choice and decision. Lots of water, lots of air. There's a choice. Maybe you or your person has a choice. You might even have a choice. Okay. Um, underlining six of cups, history, soul bond. Again, we got soul bond energy here. Somebody you have a soul bond with, you're having a tr hard time making a decision. Some of you Virgos could be, it could be reversed here where you were rejecting somebody's cup for whatever reason because you're already bound to some to another person, even though you feel a soul bond here. Take it as it resonates. Like I said, real tarot, real life. This shit happens. Seven of Swords. A lot of confusion. Very confused about what you want between these two energies. That is why you're at a standstill. That is why you are throwing the two of swords. You're pulling the two of swords. You're sitting on the fence. Not sure what energy or what you want to do here. And I do feel that that's your energy. You may even have extended your cup out to somebody that was rejected. You put a lot of work into it for somebody to turn it down, turn it away. But your heart space is in one place, your head's in another. That's the problem here. Your heart space is in one place, your head's in another. Your heart space may be still tied to that devil energy, to that person that you thought, you know, was put in a rest. To that person that rejected your cup. Your heart energy might still be there because you put a lot of work into that. That's a six of cups, that's soul bond energy. And that's what you're thinking about. Your soul bonds, your connections, your relationships very complicated right now but i'm curious about this four of swords energy show me the four of swords okay show me this four of swords king of wands hierophant on split could be a marriage Let's see what you put the rest here in the past or what you, where you try to put the rest. Seems to be a conclusion. There's something that's ending up here, though. There is a painful ending. Not sure what that is yet, though. Your passion is very strong for somebody. Okay. 
Show me the Four of Swords energy, please. Show me the Four of Swords. Show me Four of Swords. Page of Cups. Heart Space. Heart Space is partially open. Yeah, it's like your Heart Space started to open, then you shut, shut it down. Why? Why? Empress, the moon, two of cups. Hello, Virgo. You have somebody else in your heart space in your mind. Absolutely. There is a prominent connection in your life. Then there's one that's under the moon. There is somebody that means a hell of a lot to you. It's very important. Something that you quietly nurture. Two of cups. A love bond, a love connection there. There is a there is a love connection that your heart started to open up to, but you shut down. Why? Because of another connection. Okay, you have somebody under the moon that you're keeping under the moon, keeping under wraps. Meanwhile, you have somebody else that the heart space has only opened a little bit. You're trying to open it up. But there's somebody under the moon here. And I'm going back to up here where I said about your cup being rejected. For many of you, it wasn't, you put a lot of work in. However, a lot of the you Virgos probably did the rejection of that, of that cup because of a connection where your heart space really is, is under the moon. Not acknowledging it to a sword's energy. I can't acknowledge this. That's the energy. I cannot engage in this. I know that's where my heart space is. That's where my love is. That's where my passion is. But I cannot engage in this. Because I've got a connection elsewhere. So I've got to keep this under the moon. I have to keep it unspoken. Two of swords. Stillness. Yep. Some of you may be married and there might be a third party that you are not acknowledging. I'm not seeing you engaging in that in the physical world. Energetically, different story. But in the 3D, I'm not seeing that engagement. Because you're keeping them under the moon. <coughs> okay, show me this eight of wands in the recent past. What is going on? What is this change? No. Nope. Thank you. I prefer that they fully flip or land on the table. Five of Wands energy. Okay, this is an argument. Five, uh, eight of Wands communication. Five of Wands discord. There is an argument that you had recently with somebody. No. Nope. Decisive energy, please. Thank you. Seven of Cups, Page of Wands. Somebody was not making their intentions very clear. There is an argument here. It's got your emotional space extremely confused. Totally makes sense. I get this. You're longing for that new path. You're keeping your passion at minimum. Your passion's exploding internally, but... You can't, you're keeping your passion, your love space, everything under the moon energy here. But there, there's this excitement, there's this communication. There is something that you've been wanting. You've been wanting a new path. But there's been communications here. Misunderstandings, miscommunications caused an argument. I think there's a misunderstanding here that caused an argument. And with the explosive energy of the Eight of Wands, don't take the Eight of Wands lightly at all, folks. Or the Five of Wands. You know, the Five of Wands is usually a lower level. It's not as intense as the Five of Swords. Unless you mix it up with another intense card like the Eight of Wands. You gotta make you 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 gotta blow up fight here over something, a misunderstanding. 
with somebody. An argument that started out small but blew up because of miscommunication, lack of communication, or is a misunderstanding here? For someone, this was a, over a text message. I don't know who that is. My guys just showed me right here. Because, you know, I scry in my crystal ball and sometimes end up here with the water. That's why the all this is over here. Because I get messages through the candle, through the crystal ball, and through my water. Okay? They said that there was a text message. And you know how text messages are. There's no no emotions. That's why there's the emotion cons. So some people don't always use an emotion cons. I don't. And you could say something in the wording in a text message that could be construed as something else. Could somebody may have sent a text message that was misunderstood. Okay. Just saying, if you resonate with that, this is probably your story. If you don't, that's fine, okay? It might have been another form of communication or some kind of energy that there was a misunderstanding, okay? Now, let's move on. What's in your mind about this lover's? What's, in, what's this lover's card, please? That, that was very quick energy there. Uh, I was just talking about between five of wands and five of swords. You got the two worst fives in this deck. You know, the five of pentacles, five of cups, they're not nice cards. But the worst ones are the five of wands and the five of swords, in my opinion. Three fives and the five of pentacles. Fuck me. I get it now. Abandonment issues. There was something missing. You don't trust this connection. Because somebody abandoned you. I'm not sure which connection's which. You don't trust a connection. Because of being abandoned. Somebody left you out in the cold. Somebody may have ghosted you. Just saying. That's, that's the problem. That mindset is interfering with moving forward and happiness. I definitely see two distinct connections here. One of them was an abandonment issue. The other one's a new connection. Or a new connection is coming back around, a new upper, another chance. But I'm feeling more like somebody abandoned you. You don't trust it, even though that's why you keep them under the moon. Okay. You keep them under the moon because you're already committed somewhere. You may have found a new commitment. But there's somebody, there's history with somebody that you keep them under the moon. It's somebody that you, in regards to, is very important to you. That's where your heart space really is. That's where your pain is. That's where your abandonment issue is. You have a new connection, new passion coming in that you are rejecting because... somebody under the moon that you are still attached to that devil energy. I know. Cross watchers. Or I should say Virgo. You might be saying that's not me. That's the person I'm dealing with. Fine. Reverse it. Switch it. Wherever it applies. Or however it resonates. Don't force it. If you don't. If, if this isn't, if you cannot resonate with this at all, then this is not your reading. Check past readings. Or I'll catch you on the next one or check other planetary placements. I'm definitely dealing with a Virgo who has somebody under the moon. Along with a, another connection. Both of these are running side by side, parallel to each other. 
one of the cups you are rejecting because of somebody being under the moon, or you might be re rejecting this cup that's under the moon because you have somebody else. But one of these people are tied to this. And I feel like I need to tie it back here. <clears throat> you hold this person in high regards as a somebody that you true that you invested in. And that's why you're rejecting the cup. Your heart space is there. You've, they're better kept under the moon. They're better kept quiet. They're better to bear, bury those feelings than to face the potential of getting abandoned again. Okay? That's why you're not trusting it. There was this, in the recent past with somebody, I think this is probably tied to this as well. A misunderstanding between you and your primary person. Maybe not the person under the moon, but your primary person. Might be the primary person that did this abandonment. But I'm more curious about this person that you're hiding under the moon. I might have to dig into that a little bit more later. I'm real curious about that. Who's under the moon? Okay. Show me the sun energy. Show me the sun in the near future. That could be happiness and joy. That could be just enlightenment or, or seeing the light about something. Let's see. High Priestess, King of Pentacles. Trust in your intuition. There you are. There's a, You have an intuitive inclination on where your happiness is, who gives you joy. But once again, we got all the secretive energy. And it's coming from you, Virgo. I'm sorry. So for whoever this reading is for, I am talking to a Virgo who has secrets. Who is trying to figure out their path. Six of Swords energy. It's like you kind of want to move past this energy. You, you, you want that change. You want to push all this bullshit out. Maybe you are looking for brand new and neither one of these two options. That's for some. But there's definitely somebody you keep under the moon, you keep hidden. There's somebody else here you have a misunderstanding with. Um, you're thinking about the abandonment issues. You're thinking you don't trust this. You might even be thinking, uh, I need to go. I need to abandon ship. You're looking to your internally, to your intuition. How do I get past this? You're asking how. How? I need a practical plan so that I can move forward forward you're going internal internally for those answers i agree with you there you do this is a very internal decision of, that you're i'm not going to be able to tell you what to do the next reader is not going to be able to tell you what to do your aunt is not going to be able to tell you what to do your best friend's not going to be able to tell you what to do you're only going to find those within those an, the answers that you're seeking within what do i do about the dilemma I've got these two situations. I know where my heart space is. I cannot act on my heart space because I got this other connection. I'm not so sure I'm trusting my heart space. I'm not I I have this other connection that I don't trust because there's abandonment issues, there's a lack, there's something missing. I don't trust this because there's something missing. You know, I I'm thinking about this. I I'm zoning in. I know that I probably have to leave it. I have to leave something. I want to be happy. I see what I got to do, but how do I do it? That's the question. I know what I need to do, 
but how do I do it? Okay. In fact, this is the next deck. That wasn't hard. I can't jump right away. Okay, we're going to look at this. Um, show me this. Ace of Wands and Virgo Strength. Passion's very strong. When you truly give yourself to something, you give it your all. That's why this moon energy is here. Your heart is with somebody. That you, you feel like you cannot reveal. You feel like you cannot act on. I do not know why. So you've got your main storyline. You've got your main person. Your outward expression of your romantic partnerships. You've got your real world person and your fantasy person. That's a good way of putting it. The real world and the fantasy. Okay, show me this Ace of Wands. You want, you would love to be able to act on that fantasy world. The person that's in your, occupies your heart space under the moon. But you feel you can't. And I feel, think it has to do with obligation. I think you're very, you're very conflicted within yourself. Ace of Swords. Again. We're tying right back to this. You know your truth. You can spot the truth. I would say a weakness on this side would be being able to cut something out. That's what you're trying to find out here. How do I cut somebody out? How do I cut something toxic off? Typically, you're successful in whatever you accomplish, but you definitely have your doubts about this. You're doubting your own ability to make... You're, you're doubting your own decision capability. But you have very strong feelings about this truth. About your... And I feel this time back to this, this is your personal truth. Two of Swords... That you did not want to see or recognize. That there's still somebody under the moon. You know, I said in the beginning that there's something that's come about. Probably that text message. Here we go. As I said, the storyline unfolds as I dig. Okay? Here we go. You're going along through life. You're having conflicts with somebody you're with. Yes. Yes. You have on and off with this person that you are currently connected to. Yes. May have been some mind games and some manipulation. That's why I saw that devil card. You know, codependency between the two of you. But you feel obligated for whatever reason. Okay? Yes, there is a soul bond with that. But you can have soul bonds with multiple people. Okay? Now, what has happened here? You put somebody, some, a situation to rest of the past. There is definitely somebody in history that you have with high regard, somebody important to you. You kind of was closing off that heart space to that person and keeping it under the moon and burying it. That's why it's under you. I put that, I put that to rest. That's gone. I put that to rest. Surprise text message. Out of the blue. Ignites a, a misunderstanding between you and your main person. This text message comes from this person under the moon. Two of swords. I got to block this. I cannot feel this. This person may, made you face certain truths or at certain realities about what you know you feel in your heart space. So, instead of facing that truth, you chose, I'm not engaging this, two of swords. I've got a connection elsewhere. It may not be happy, 
but I got another connection. I buried this shit a long time ago. I buried this person a long time ago. But the reemergence has brought this, is bringing those emotions up to the surface, and you are trying like hell to suppress them. I know what I feel in my heart space. This person still occupies my heart space out even after all this time. But I can't engage it. I cannot engage this. There may have been abandonment issues with this person in the past. Something obviously did not work out in the past. But you never forgot them. <clears throat> Your heart never let go. So, this argument I do not feel is with this person. It's with the person you are currently, the connection you are currently in. Messages that come in causes this misunderstanding. So now you're really questioning shit. Because a, a relationship that is not ideal already, that has problems, now you're questioning it. Do, do I really trust my heart? Maybe I need to ab abandon both connections. Stay single. Go off and do my own thing. All that I know is I know I have to let something go. Somebody or maybe both people. It is going to hurt like hell. Ten of swords. I need to go within. I need to withdraw my energy from both. I need to figure out what I, Virgo, want. I do not know how to make this decision. Who do I choose or do I choose either one? What do I do? All I know is I need some peace. I need, to, I need peace of mind once and for all. What do I do? I, Virgo, <clears throat> need a practical plan. I need to think this out. I need to trust my intuition. I need to go within. Okay. Your strengths here are reflecting that. You recognize the truth. But I think the two of swords, it went from blocking it into, I recognize it, but I cannot act upon it. Okay, what else here? Anything else? Four of chalices. There's that rejected cup again. This is recognizing that somebody's cup has been rejected. Your cup or their cup. This is recognizing I cannot accept somebody's cup. You're very strong in that. You're very firm. I cannot accept the somebody's cup. Edgy cups. They might, in a small way, small gestures, offering you a cup here. I cannot accept that cup. I cannot. I cannot engage in this. I cannot act upon my heart space. I cannot accept this cup. That's what you're saying right here. But there's that change up here. Interesting. Where am I at on time here? Oh, 48 minutes already. Wow. Hope you're still with me. Okay, show me this. Um... Nine of Pentacles. In the okay, somebody wants to work with you. Three of Pentacles. They may be coming forth as friendship. Let's work together. Let's communicate. Let's talk. What was this communication? That they're single. This person that you keep under the man has communicated that they are single. They're, they're, and that's just who they are here in the environment. But they're presenting themselves as a friend. Misunderstanding here. Somebody else that you're connected to was not looking at that as a friendship message or something like that, to that effect. They're offering you something. You're like, I can't accept this cup. <clears throat> I can't accept this offer. There's a sense of persistence here. 
text messages, physical messages. Somebody wants to bring this friendship into the real world 3D. And it's like, I can't do this. I can't do this energy from you. What else? Not a chalices. You're dealing with somebody here that you keep under the moon whose heart space is opening up. They're trying to offer you friendship. That friendship is disguising their heart, their, their, their emotions, their heart space. Their heart space is opening up. Their heart space gravitates to you. But they're kind of in the energy of, this is where my heart space is, but I'll present it to Virgo as friendship. Let me offer them friendship and see what happens. That's who you're dealing with. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this change. Show me Wheel of Fortune, please. Eight of Swords. That's a fear. Fearing this change. Fearing. It's like um, change is happening, but you don't see it. That's that. I can't acknowledge this. There's something changing in your heart space that you're refusing to acknowledge. Two of Wands. A decision that's recognizing you know that there's a decision that has to be made. And you don't want to make it. You're afraid of what the decision of how to make that decision, what are the consequences. Nine of Swords underlying. Stressing over this. So you are really stressing over this situation. I can understand But we can't always dictate. It's like the heart wants what the heart wants. Your heart's right here, hon. This is where your heart is. Your heart's not here with this person that was presenting the argument or your current situation. Your heart's not here. It's here. But you don't want to recognize it. Your heart space is changing. They're, you know, it's like about ready to flip your world upside down. This enlightenment. That enlightenment is this person under your heart space. Under your moon. <clears throat> the stillness. Not willing to make a change. Staying stuck where you're at in an unsatisfactory connection. And let me remind you, you got the four of cups reflected a couple times. That could be indicating you, re you rejecting both people. That's a very strong possibility. I can't choose... So I choose none. I choose nobody. Anything else here? Decisive energy. There we go. Okay. Six of wands. Nine of wands. This is you recognizing and realizing you got to make a choice. you got to take some action. You know you got to take some action. This is reflecting back on this. I know I've got to do something. I just don't know how to do it. I need a practical plan. Okay. Show me this Ten of Swords and the outcome. Page of Wands. Three of chalices. You know, somebody that really occupies your heart space is painful. You might be rejecting their cup. Just saying. Or that could be chariot. A choice. Choose. You're choosing your course. Okay. Okay. 
there is definitely an ending that's going to be painful. You do have to communicate that. Up here. I think some of you, as you know, you have to make a choice. You're choosing your direction towards your heart space. Thank you, Virgo. After all this fucking digging, finally, all this bullshit, this, all this stuff is all bullshit. In the end, choosing the direction towards your passion and your heart space. Again, tarot does not dictate action. You do. Again, and so this is a hypothesis, if you will, the potential. I read the energies. This is where the energies are. Energies are leading towards. You've got free will. This chariot. You can't. You have the free will to choose. To not choose your heart space, your passion and your heart space, and stay where you are. But, regardless, I feel it's one of them situations that I would not wish on anybody, even my worst enemy. Because no matter what decision you make, it's going to be painful. Out of all three possible scenarios. One, staying where you are. Two, Following your heart, going after your heart space. Three, rejecting both of these and starting new someplace else. Finding something new. Or staying single. Staying single and staying in this, putting yourself in the single pool. Until something else comes along. I see those as your three options. Each Virgo that this resonates with, you know, you all, all of you can choose different options. I think there's going to be a mixed bag. Some of you is going to put yourself in the single pool. Some of you is going to follow your heart space. Some of you is going to stay where you are in a toxic situation. My cards don't lie. Now I need to look at this advice. Or just slippery for some reason. Eight of Cups falls right out. Walking away from somebody. And you gotta walk away from something. And typically, the Eight of Cups is there's if something's not fulfilling your heart space, if something is, if the emotionality is not there, we tend to walk away from things that are unhealthy from uh, for us. And I'm looking at this advice, and it's almost like saying, yeah. Virgo needs to leave. That the witch is not serving them. Virgo needs to walk away from something that's not happy, from toxicity, from codependencies. Don't be with somebody because you feel obligated. You need to be obligated to yourself. Dedicated to yourself. It's hard to tell Virgo that. I know. Virgos are typically extremely loyal. Hence why Virgo saying, I cannot engage this. I cannot. I am loyal to where I'm at. I may not be happy where I'm at, but it's what I chose a long time ago. I buried this. And, you know, Virgo's conflicted within their heart space of what to do. And in your, their head, their head saying one thing, and heart saying something else, Virgo. You know, and you might have to break out of your norm. <laughs> Nine of Swords, uh... You've been getting pop, nine of swords have been popping up like crazy in this reading for you because you are stressed. Anybody would be stressed because this is a this is like one of those situations that you have to figure out how you are going to win. What does Virgo want? What is going to make Virgo happy? It's going to cause pain to other people, yes. 
just one of them unfortunate situations. Okay, show me tower. Hereford. I don't think I need to say a whole lot more on that. This is a commitment. This is being committed. This is the norm. This is um, tradition. This is what I know to be right. I have to do the right thing. The universe is saying, break out of that norm. Break out of those old traditions, an old way of thinking. You need to be flexible. You need to abandon something. You're in something that's not healthy, hon. Magician. There you are. Virgo Gemini. Okay. This is a very spiritual um, situation here. Your guides are talking to you. They're saying you have the power. You have to want it. This is saying to me, you want freedom. You do not want to be oppressed. You do not want to be in codependency. You want happiness. You want a solid union. But in order to get that solid union, you need to let something else go. Abandon ship. Time to abandon ship here. Anything else? Tower again. Let me know if you're dealing with a Scorpio. Yeah, you got to break something free. Stop holding on to some... Fuck. Man. Scorpio... Um... I said, Scorpio, some of you's dealing with a fucking Scorpio. I swear. I swear somebody's dealing with a Scorpio. Could be an Aries. Because a tower could be Scorpio or Aries. Okay? You're dealing with a Scorpio or you're dealing with an Aries. There's a lot of... There is plenty of fire in here. But this is release. You've been holding on to something that you need to release and let go of. This is considered under the moon. Yes, you could say you're holding on to this, but I'm not feeling that it is where you're at right now. That you are staying in out of obligation. You feel that you are expected to. You feel that it is your duty to stay in the relationship that you're in. Your heart's crying for something else. So Your heart is crying for that person that you keep Suppressed under the moon. You got the tower twice, hon. Twice. Always pay attention to doubles or multiples in a reading. That is telling me the person you are with is feeling the same thing. It's just unspoken. They want their freedom too. They don't want to be in this relationship with you as any more than you want to be in the relationship with them. You are both connected out of duty. Obligation. But neither one of you are happy. Doubles on the four of cups. That's what that is. Neither one of you are happy in your relationship. You have something gorgeous here. Something gorgeous. This is tying up to this. You got the potential for something gorgeous. With where your heart space really is. Can't say you're going to take it for sure. Your energy suggests. That's where it's gravitating to. I read the energy. Not exactly what's happening. Or not exactly what is going to happen. I read the potential of the energy. The energy flow. You can always make that. You can always change that energy flow. But you see what spirit's trying to tell you. Seven of wands blockage. Taking a stand and being very protective. I think this is about needing to protect yourself, your own energy. You need
need to protect your own energy, hon. I'm looking for some time markers on here. Right off the bat, I get cancer. Cancer's next month. Well, at the end of this, at the end of June, we're in Gemini right now. Cancer season's coming up. For some of you, this could be as soon as cancer. For others of you, Leo. I'm getting like next, because I'm, I'm seeing this line and I'm picking up Leo. So cancer season, Leo season. Potentially into your own birth, time, birth month, into Virgo. So the height of summer, June, July, August. But this is going to be playing out. Six weeks for the near future. So some of you are not going to see this. It's like developing in Gemini season. But may not fully get up to here until Cancer or Leo. Maybe as far out as your own season, Virgo season. This, I feel, from the time of this reading, like into like the, maybe the first week of July, that's cancer season. But I'm feeling like this could be by the end of June, first week of July. But very strong emphasis on Cancer and Leo. I'm leaning more towards Leo. Leo's coming through very, very strong because of all the fire. There are some, not all, but there are some Virgos that are not going to realize this until Scorpio season. As far out as Scorpio. We'll not get to this point. But this is what's playing out in June for you guys. At least all, all at least this stuff. Some of this, like I said, could be as far out as Scorpio. The majorities I feel is gonna be Leo, some in Cancer. Okay, let's see if there is anything else here. Okay, we'll get the Infinity Oracle. And I have no idea where I am on time. I can only imagine. Let me do a quick time check on this. 108. Okay. We're getting ready to wrap this up, guys. Okay, messages for Virgo, please. What messages do you have for Virgo? Epiphany. Very well said. That ties back to that enlightenment. Ties back to this communication. What you learned through that communication. Having, having that epiphany that you're really not happy where you're at. Having that epiphany of where your heart space really is. Divine Feminine New Love Chaser. Okay. So whoever's in your heart space, that new love could be literally you not choosing either one of these people and you're going for a new love and chasing new love. Others of you, your Divine Feminine. This back here might have been a missed opportunity.
But this is having an epiphany about your divine feminine, who your true divine feminine is. Finding that love again. That could be new love. That could be a renewal of love. And chasing after it. Some of you, that's literally going to be, okay, I'm going to find another divine feminine. Okay, karmic lesson here. Inner child healing. So, you got a karmic lesson here. This is, this whole fucked up mess is a karmic lesson for you. There's going to be some inner healing that you're going to need to do. Inner child healing from this karmic lesson, guaranteed. Tied to the Ten of Swords, the pain. Okay. Chaser. Chaser could be you, but my guys are kind of leaning towards this person under the moon, trying to chase after you to try to come up to the surface. Yep. What else do we have? Anything else? Okay. I could see why the one reader called um, Sassy Scorpio calls this Big Red. I could see why. But the pat I like to call this my passion deck. I got the bitch and I got my passion. This is the passion. If I get any other additional messages. Okay, before closing this out, any other additional messages for my Virgo, please? Any additional messages for my Virgo? Lovers. You got a choice, hon. Look at this. Ten of fucking swords. A painful choice. Because something's got to end. In order for you to move on. Sorry Virgo. I sympathize with you. I really do. It's not going to be easy. But you're very strong in your passion. And in your truth. You're very good with your communication skills. Okay. This energy up here shows. You're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. Okay, Virgo, that's what I have for you. Um, if this isn't your story, that's not your story. I'll see you in the next one. Or check your other placements. I am signing out on this. Love each and every one of you. Love and light. Blessed be.